the third and final day of the 96th Nebraska FFA State Convention. Good day to you. I am Alex Makovica alongside Rebel Seclocha. It has just been a jam-packed three days. So good to see all these students around here. Oh my goodness, there are over 7,000 FFA members in Lincoln this week, competing in contests, of course, attending workshops. And yesterday, the career fair was on the concourse here at Pinnacle Bank Arena, and students had a chance to look at various career opportunities within agriculture. We're now joined by Saul with North Central Kansas Technical College, and you are visiting with students about the career opportunities they have. What does that look like for you guys at North Central Kansas Technical College? So what we're trying to push for is just those careers that are in high demand, high paying careers. So anything that's hands on, obviously we're a tech college, so that's what we are looking for. Um, usually a lot of our rural students do really good, but we're also looking for kids that they're just not sure on what they want to do, and a lot of them they farm, especially with FFA, right? They don't know that there's careers that they can get educated in when they can go back to their farm and do the same stuff they're doing, so. You guys brought out a cool paint simulator yeah. to your booth. That's probably drawn a lot of attention. Yeah. What exactly is it? So it's an auto collision simulator. It's a program we offer, it's an associate's degree. So students get up to, uh, they get to sand the cars, work on the cars and just restore vehicles, just like any other program, right? Um, they do get their associates from it, like I said, but it's just one of the many simulators we have on campus, so. Awesome. Yeah. Saul, you've had a lot of conversations with students, I, I imagine. What sticks out in your mind? Um, for these students, this is the first time I've ever worked with FFA students. I know what FFA is, um, and it's a, one of the biggest events I've been with for FFA. So a lot of these kids, they've all been really respectful, but they're all really interested in those hands-on careers, which is what I want to see, right? It's what I'm recruiting for. So I just think they're doing good, and uh, it looks good w once they get out of high school, everything in, on their resumes and stuff. So I think they'll do good after that. So. Okay, awesome. Fascinating yeah. conversation. That's all joining us with North Central Kansas Technical College. Just an awesome opportunity to get a first-hand look at all of the different careers that are available in the ag industry. Very cool stuff. Absolutely. If you're not following us on Instagram or TikTok, which you should be, at Rural Radio Network, we've been having a lot of fun chatting with members and doing some creative things on social media. You guys describe FFA in one word. Oh no. <laughs> What's the question? Uh, Leadership. Family. Inspiring. Educational. Amazing. Spontaneous. Awesome. Commitment. Oh. Do I just say it? Yeah. Leadership. I think FFA is hard work. Dedication. Powerful. I'm Dan the Organist. My jacket came from Facebook on one of them clothing stores. My shirt was a hand-me-down from my brother Bob, which is brand new in the package he never wore. My pants, I think I bought them a few years ago, can't remember. And my uh, shoes came from the Goodwill. And my bow tie, I had it when I played in the dance band. And I guess that's just me. That's Nothing can stop that me, that I'm all the way it. up. Again, if you're not already, go ahead and follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Rural Radio Network. So one of the cool things that happens here at Pinnacle Bank Arena is a display called Hall of Chapters, where students get to put together something that represents their chapter along with the theme, which this year is unwritten. We had a chance to catch up with one of the students to share a little bit more about what they created. We're here at Pinnacle Bank Arena, and I'm with Callie Eisenzimmer of the Ogallala FFA chapter. Callie is receiving her state degree this week, but she's also a participant in the Hall of Chapters exhibit. Tell us about what you put together for your exhibit this year. So for our Hall of Chapters exhibit, we kind of wanted to go with the theme of convention, which is unwritten. So we did a past, present, and future for our theme of Hall of Chapters. In our past portion, we kind of talked about um, the old FFA went back in like the uh, 50s. So we had a yearbook and we printed off some pictures from there. It talked about the blizzard of 49. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting to see all of that. Um, we talked about some of like the older farms and ranches around Ogallala. Uh, and then for the present part, we talked about some of the kids who have SAEs going on right now and why it's important to have them and what they're learning with their SAE. We also just did some fun little pictures from this past year that were memorable. And then for our future portion of the Hall of Chapters, we talked about the Perkins County Canal that they want to put in. It's kind of a big thing in Ogallala right now, whether or not we're going to get it. And so I thought it was important to include that in the future portion. 
And then we also did pictures of the connecting chapters with the little kids because they are the future of agriculture. So we thought it was really important to include them. Very cool. But well, what is your favorite aspect of the exhibit? I think the favorite is probably the present mm -hmm. just because you're living in the moment and the future is unwritten, so you never know what's going <laughs> to happen. Awesome. Well, you're also receiving your state degree this week. What has been the most memorable thing from your FFA experience? Honestly, probably watching Thomas Perrin win state president last year made me cry a little bit. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. Very cool. Ogallala so, proud for sure. Yes. Well, once again, that's Callie Eisenzemmer from the Ogallala FFA chapter here at State Convention. We're now going to learn a little bit more about what State FFA is all about. And joining us is Mila Alvarez. She's of the Wood River FFA chapter, a freshman this year. This is not your first year at convention, right? Nope, I went last year. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing this year at convention. This year, we're going to all the sessions. We actually had one of our members compete. Well, he did the piano today earlier. Very good. Yeah. What would you say your favorite part about being in FFA is? Probably interacting with people during like the sessions or like we did an escape room earlier and it was really fun to communicate with everybody in that. I think you make a good point. It's not just about, you know, competing at State FFA. There's lots of opportunities to learn and grow, right? Yep. Good deal. Okay, so for all of the people who are looking up to you and your chapter, what's your message to them about being involved in FFA? Learn how to like communicate with people because it's really fun to get to know everybody and it's not that fun if you just sit there in your hotel room. It's fun to get out there and walk around and meet new people. Absolutely. Mila, what do you get to compete in? Well, this year I did Ag Demo, Livestock Judging. In eighth grade, I competed in Quiz Bowl State, and that was really fun. Going to meet a lot of new people. That again is Mila Alvarez joining us. She's a freshman at the Wood River FFA chapter, joining us to share more about her experiences. I'm here with Burke Settles of the Raymond FFA chapter. Earlier this week, he competed in the Ag Mechanics Contest. Shed some light on what the Ag Mechanics Contest entails. So the contest itself, there's like, there's about five uh, written tests about electrical, um, uh, hydraulics, small engines, and stuff like that. And then there's a practicum where you have to wire an outlet, switch, and light. And then there's a, a manual test where you take a test over a, a handbook for a machine and then a equipment test where you just you observe a machine and take a written test over that. Awesome. So what's your favorite part of the contest? I like the electrical practicum. Wiring, I, I want to go into electrical. So. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. What's the most interesting thing you've learned preparing for the state competition? Um, preparing for AgMag, there's been a lot of just little things that I didn't quite know before. like different parts of small engines. There's just a couple other little pieces I didn't know. So, awesome. stuff like that. Awesome. Well, thank you. Once again, that's Burke Settles of the Raymond FFA chapter. As we continue our coverage of this year's Nebraska FFA State Convention, we're joined by Kyle with Tallgrass. We appreciate you joining us, Kyle. I want to learn a little bit more about the company and your support for ag education here in the state of Nebraska. But first, who is Tallgrass? What do you guys do? Great. Thank you very much. And we appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, so as you said, my name is Kyle Quackenbush. I'm a segment president uh, at Tallgrass Energy. Uh, you know, Tallgrass is actually called Nebraska home for more than a decade. Not a lot of people would necessarily know us, but uh, our business is operating pipelines and infrastructure to be able to deliver commodities uh, to markets here in the state. So for us today, that's primarily natural gas assets. We operate about uh, a little over 2,000 miles of pipeline in the state today. We support, uh, provide energy to a lot of the ethanol plants that exist in the state, as well as a lot of the rural communities. Well, this is an exciting industry because things are quickly evolving and yes. changing. What do you enjoy about it? I think that you nailed it, actually. You know, we provide a really necessary service um, in an area where you have dynamic markets and changing. And so we're looking at different commodities. We are looking at different ways to provide solutions. I, I like the nature of that, to be able to say, we're providing a critical service. We need to make sure that we are continuing to do so in an innovative way going forward to stay relevant, but also to meet our customers' changing needs. Well, Tallgrass is supporting Nebraska FFA Foundation through yeah. a variety of ways, including sponsoring the stream, which we yes. appreciate you uh, yeah, to shed a little bit of a light on that. But why invest in agricultural education here yeah. in the Cornhusker State? Yeah, no, great question. So we have this state, statement at Tallgrass that we um, say to each other that, you know, when farmers and ranchers do well, we all do well. And we can't think of a better way to support that or back that up than by 
supporting the FFA Foundation here in Nebraska. Um, you know, as we think about the FFA, you know, this investment that we're putting forward here is about you know, innovation and opportunity for future generations. Um, and so we want to make sure that these students have the tools, the mentorship, the opportunities that will help prepare them for the next generations of challenges and opportunities that they have the ability to take advantage of. Well, there are 8,000 FFA members and supporters here in Lincoln for Nebraska FFA Steak Avenge, and that's certainly exciting. I want to ask yeah. you this question. Yeah. When it comes to the next generation of agriculturalists, these youth uh, involved in ag education today, what kind of advice would you give them? Sure. That, well, that, thank you for asking. I, th these are the important questions. <laughs> so first of all, uh, you know, these will be big picture things. I think, and these are all advice that I've been given by people that care about me in my life. So one is, I think, uh, it is important no matter what you are doing to be living in accordance with your values. And so whether that's what you are doing, who you are working with, where you are working, if you're not living in accordance with those values, you will find things to be a challenge and a grind. Um, and it won't be as rewarding as if you are able to actually live those out in your work. Uh, not always easy to do, but incredibly important. I think the other thing I would say is it is incredibly important to embrace change as you're faced with it. Look at those as opportunities versus challenges. I know that you mentioned we have a very dynamic environment in the energy industry. Um, when I look at those things as opportunities and things that we can go adapt and change, uh, adapt to and, and meet, um, we are more likely to be successful for doing that. The last one is, uh, you know, as I interact with my kids, um, life is a gift. Don't be afraid. There is so much opportunity that's out there. As I talk to my kids, they're so anxious about what's going to happen. There will be challenges that you're going to be able to face. Um, do that without fear and be able to lean into those and, and, and be thankful for those opportunities as they present themselves. Some great pieces of advice. Kyle, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure show. to be here. Backstage of the 96th Nebraska State FFA Convention, we're joined by Nebraska Governor Jim Pillen, who just had the chance to address FFA members. What was your message to those students? You know, a couple things real simple. Uh, one is uh, try to share the gift of appreciation. Make sure that we all appreciate where we're at and that all the kids have a great appreciation for being a part of the organization FFA. It's extraordinary and a, and a great opportunity, number one. And then number two, uh, we need to make sure that our kids know the grass is greenest, tallest, and luscious here in Nebraska. Um, future of agriculture has never been brighter in the history of our state. Uh, there's incredible careers and opportunities for all the kids in all phases of agriculture. And lastly, Nebraska agriculture, we got to brag about it. We feed the world and we save the planet. Uh, uh, and then lastly, the, our pot of gold, the Ogallala Aquifer, that we have to protect our aquifer. We have to treat every drop of water uh, like it's our last. And uh, together we can do that. What excites you about this group of students? You know, they're our future. They're our future. Uh, they're our br brightest stars. And uh, they have incredible impacts in their schools and their communities. And uh, if anybody's worried about the future, I'm betting the farm on them. All right, that's Nebraska Governor Jim Pillen backstage of the 96th Nebraska State FFA Convention. Just a snippet of those Hall of Chapters displays that are available to see over on the main concourse of Pinnacle Bank Arena. These students put in a lot of work into those. <laughs> Absolutely. At every general session so far, retiring state officers have had the opportunity to deliver their retiring addresses. Bryce Duskett had the chance to catch up with retiring state FFA president Thomas Perrin. What is the third and final day of the Nebraska FFA State Convention? We begin to wrap up our interviews with the state FFA officers. Two of them joining us now. Thomas Perrin, who serves as state president and state vice president, is Abby Hodges. Good to visit with the two of you. We'll get some thoughts on retiring addresses coming up in a moment. But Thomas, when you look back on the past year, were there any particular initiatives or things that you and your teammates wanted to address that you had a chance to do so over the past year? Yeah, when we all got together for the first time in April, we came up with our team goal for the year, and that was to really grow students and give them the possibility to grow into the best individuals they could be this entire year, and to also make those connections with those students. We have an entire year, 365 days, to represent Nebraska, as well as the students within this Nebraska FFA Association, and that was a really good goal that we set right back in April, that we really wanted to make that initiative and take that initiative to make sure students had that best possibility to grow. 
It's exciting. More and more people are getting involved in agricultural education and FFA, but I suppose with seven state officers, it makes it a bit challenging to try to reach 12,000 uh, students across the state. <laughs> what were some of the techniques that uh, you deployed because of that? So the best thing we use to our advantage is social media, making sure that we're posting about working with students, showing off students that have grown within themselves, within their supervised agriculture experience, or just within their chapter. Also, taking full opportunities when we are with students, whether that's at EDGE conference, Colt conference, or even most recently on chapter visits, making sure that we're making those connections and showing them the opportunities that are available to them within the organization at their community level, state level, and even at the national level. Abby, we talk about chapter visits with uh, each one of our interviews here. For you, as you look back at those, any particular stories of, of memorable things that happen on those you'd like to share with us? I think, first of all, I came from southeast Nebraska, so when I traveled west, it was Kearney was western Nebraska, so um, a, lot of, a lot of traveling went on. Um, I had a chapter visit on my birthday, um, and so the Shelby Rising City chapter really like celebrated me well, um, and so it was like honestly the best possible uh, thing to do on your birthday was to be with students and members and uh, get to hang out with them. Well, one of the things I can't wait to see is your retiring address. What is your uh, retiring address titled? What's your message to the members? My retiring address is titled Overwhelmed with Joy. Um, and the basis of it is, is often we get overwhelmed with all the stuff we have to do, like um, schoolwork and extracurriculars and things like that. But instead of being overwhelmed with stress, um, I try to be overwhelmed with joy and look for the joy in all of those moments. Thomas, let's get your thoughts on your retiring address. You delivered at the seventh and final session. No pressure anything for you. It's <laughs> the final message that members will hear. What are you going to share with them? So my RA is titled Valuable, and I talk about having that true value that an individual holds and not comparing yourself to everybody around you. As an individual, you hold an initiative and a value that no one else has and making sure that you're looking at the joy that can come from the activities and the interests you have, as well as not comparing yourself to people around you, not being stressed and overwhelmed with how others are doing, just focusing on yourself and where you wanna go in your life. What's looking, I guess, think big picture here for a second, Thomas, how do you see this past year serving as state FFA uh, president and as one of these seven officers, how do you see that propelling uh, you and your future? I see it giving me an opportunity to meet so many more people. The amount of people I've met this year has really opened the doors to a bunch of opportunities, not only in the business and industry side of agriculture, but also getting to the community level as well. Getting to interact with different communities and being able to go back to those communities and be a mentor, be a coach wherever I might end up someday, but also giving me that step forward to have communication skills, being able to talk and make those connections with those that are around me. Thomas and Abby, two of the uh, Nebraska FFA state officers, the final two we interview you here as part of our FFA pre-session show. Again, we'll hear the retiring address from Nebraska FFA State President Thomas Perrin. He's originally of the Ogallala FFA chapter coming up at the third and final day of this Nebraska FFA State Convention. We're also going to get to see all of the FFA members get their state degrees, it's the highest degree that the state can bestow upon its members. A lot of them seniors this year getting that state degree. And then we're going to meet the newly elected Nebraska FFA State Officer Team. Awesome. It has been a jam-packed few days here in Lincoln. That'll do it for our pre-show coverage here at the 96th Annual Nebraska State FFA Convention. Let's head on side to Pinnacle Bank Arena.